If you've watched Matthew Ogborn's or read anything about this, the first thing you need to do is calibrate the accelerometer, and there's six different moves you need to do there, um, putting it up the right way, upside down, uh, on its nose, left, all that sort of stuff anyway. I'm not going to show you how to do that. You need to read about that yourself and make sure you do it properly before you do anything else. And if you look on the screen over here, you'll see that the um, accelerometer is calibrated and it's uh, ready to go. Now it's saying navigation is not safe because I'm inside and it hasn't acquired, the GPS hasn't acquired enough satellites at this stage. Let's look at presets. So you can, if you do have a brand new board with no configurations on it, you can set it up for uh, different craft. Matt Ogborn says this flying Win Z80 is a good one for most wings. Configuration. So this this screen tells you where to plug your uh, servos into the board. iNav allows for twin motors, so the first two spots on the board, the Q1 and the Q2 here, are reserved for motors. So uh, with a single engine like the Bixler, you just plug the ESC into Q1. Q2 remains spare. Ailerons into four and five, rudder into six, elevator into three. On the Bixler I'm using crappy old analogue servos, so the servo refresh rate has to be at 50. If I was using good quality fast digital servos, I'd change that to 330 hertz, uh, and I would get much quicker, much smoother performance. But seeing it's an old Bixler, I'm just leaving it on the analogue servos. Now I also selected don't spin motors on arm, uh, don't spin the motors when armed. That's a that's a quad thing, so we don't know what that's all about. Minimum throttle a thousand, maximum throttle two thousand, middle fifteen hundred. As I said, I don't really know what all this stuff's about. Now later on, when you're flying in one of the stabilised modes, uh, you can adjust the flight attitude by by mucking around with these these different values here. If it's uh, in fact, I found mine was a bit nose down when I was flying it, so. I could uh, change the pitch degrees here. I don't actually know positive or negative. I'd have to read the wiki to work that out. But anyway, I just actually physically moved the board on the plane to uh, fix the nose down problem. But uh, yes, I should be doing it in here. Should be taking a, a laptop into the field and doing it here. Receiver mode. Now, what sort of receiver are you using? I'm using SBUS, so I would choose this sort of receiver here. If you're using PWM, you would choose that one. If you're using PPM, you'd choose that one. Now, this one always confused me, this next one here. This is the serial receiver provider. Now, this is only relevant if you're using serial-based receiver here. Then you have to sort of tell it, tell it which one it is. If you're using PWM or PPM, you don't have to worry about this selection. don't even know what these things mean. I am using GPS for navigation and telemetry. That was all pre-configured, so I didn't do anything about that. Nothing else of relevance in there for me. Failsafe. A few different failsafe scenarios with these X-series receivers. I think they will automatically send the right signal to the flight control board in a failsafe situation without doing anything. I actually set it to uh, no pulses on failsafe on the receiver, and the flight control board understands what it has to do then. In this screen here you select the behaviour on a failsafe event. I want it to return to home, so I click this button here. Don't want it to land. Now any time you make a change in these screens you have to click save and reboot otherwise the the change you made isn't isn't saved. So that's something you've got to remember. Pid tuning, black magic to me, don't know anything about it. Advanced tuning, here are some interesting settings here. Return to home and land settings. Return to home altitude is the altitude that it will uh, circle above your head when it comes back home, and that's centimetres, so that's 50 metres. With this button here, you can choose whether the uh, plane, when it gets to a fail-safe situation or a return to home, it either climbs first and then turns around and comes home, or it turns around and comes home and then climbs on the way back. This is the way I want it. I want it to um, not climb first, of course, it seems like it's just flying away then in a fail-safe situation. It just keeps going in the same direction it's going and getting higher, then it'll turn around. So it gives you heart attacks that way. So I get it to turn around straight away and then start climbing. Don't want it to land after return to home. 
nothing else I understand there. Loiter radius, you can uh, define how wide the radius of the circle is that it does above your head. All right, I'll plug the receiver in. Now you'll see that the receiver has been powered up by the S-Bus connection through the flight control board and back to the USB connection. Now the first step, I'm not going to go through all of this because it's, it's uh, going to be too complicated to explain for me, but you need to uh, watch the videos, watch the wikis and set up the receiver screen correctly so the aileron, when you push the aileron to the right, the roll goes right, pitch when you pull down it goes down, up it goes up, your push to the right and the your input goes to the right and throttle reacts the way you would think all on that receiver screen. First of all you set it up with the transmitter then you don't touch the transmitter. By the way with the, with the transmitter you the mixing, you don't have any mixing at all uh, the way I've got it anyway. Aileron on channel 1, elevated channel 2, throttle channel 3, rudder on channel 4, SE, SA, SD switches and SC switches. So I've got four different switches operating the modes. And these are in INAV, auxiliary 1, auxiliary 2, auxiliary 3 and auxiliary 4 on channel 8. You can also see the inputs changing on that uh, graph down the bottom there as well as you wiggle the sticks. Looks like you can set up Expo in here. I've just left it as default. Looks like I've got 0.7 Expo. Demonstrate these uh, auxiliary switches too. That's auxiliary 2, uh, auxiliary 1. They're all my auxiliary switches anyway. That shows that they're working on the screen there. Now, what do those auxiliary switches do? Here's we set up the mode. So, uh, it's a much better idea, in fact it's essential to have arming of the board on a switch rather than the sticks like you would with a quad. So arm um, I've got on auxiliary one uh, is this one here. You'll actually see it reacting on the screen there as I switch the what's that the S the S E switch. You can change these ranges here. Uh, these are the three positions. You'll see this little blue dot down here. Click to the middle position and the lower position. And you just sort of move these sliders to sort of capture those positions. On my auxiliary 2, nothing in the up position. Horizon mode in the centre position. Angle mode in the bottom position. When you have no mode selected, it's in acro mode, which gives a little bit of uh, stabilisation, but lets you do whatever you want with the plane. Really nice mode to fly in, actually. Uh, so in the middle position we go to horizon mode and that is uh, self-leveling uh, but you can still go all the way, you can do rolls and flips and things like that. Angle mode is self-leveling but with limited movement, you can never do a roll or a flip in that mode. So angle, angle mode is sort of the most stabilised I guess. And you can see the, uh, the horizon box and the angle box light up when it's activated just to show that it's actually working. So on auxiliary 3 switch I have a pass through mode which uh, takes out any action of the flight control board. This is like a, uh, I want to take total control of the plane. I have that on the same switch as the nav launch. This is the auto launch mode where you set it to this mode, arm the board, set the throttle up to whatever you think you need to take off, then you just throw the plane and it throttles up as soon as it leaves your hand and flies in a stable mode uh, climbing until you wiggle the sticks or until or for five seconds then it goes into whatever other mode you have selected so what I really want to try is have auto launch mode and return to home so uh, I guess it will auto launch fly for five seconds then click into return to home mode and come back and circle over your head all without having to pick up your transmitter and on auxiliary 4 I have nav position hold which is like a loiter mode which will just loiter around or circle around the uh, spot where you activate that mode and return to home mode the plane basically turns around climbs up to the predetermined height and comes home again very exciting that mode adjustments we don't need to do anything there servos initially in this receiver mode uh, we set up the transmitter to get everything going in the right direction without touching anything on the flight control board. 
Now, that doesn't necessarily mean the servos on the plane will go in the right direction. This just means that the compensation will be in the right direction, or the stabilisation effect will be in the right direction. So now we need to go to servos and check the actual movement of the servos on the plane, and this is where we change the direction of travel of the servos so that the plane flies properly. So you do your normal uh, high five setup so that moving the aileron stick to the right makes the right aileron go up and etc. all of that sort of stuff. GPS, uh, if it had acquired some sats it would actually show a, a sort of like a Google map there and pinpoint your position. Motors, uh, what does this do? Doesn't seem to do anything there. Haven't got an OSD, LED strip, sensors. Uh, so this is, you can see the sensors operating as you move the board around. Tether logging, black box and CLI. So that's about it really for setting up in iNav. Uh, there are some other instructions you can put in, you can type in here. But yeah, there's not a lot I can tell you about that at this stage. Um, so that is about all. Alright, so that's pretty much iNav. Uh, there are lots and lots more instructions you can put in here and stuff that I really can't explain so uh, I'll leave you to uh, investigate that yourself. So we'll disconnect now we can connect it up to the uh, Bixler and make sure everything is working properly.